This is the Expect Miracles podcast. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Expect Miracles podcast. If you are enjoying the show, subscribe for weekly podcast episodes, and don't forget to leave us a review to help spread the Expect Miracles message. Today on the podcast, we have an amazing Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractor out of San Diego, California, Dr. Mercedes Cook. Now, most people that become upper cervical doctors is because it saved their life in some type of way. And upper cervical chiropractic gave Dr. Mercedes her life back when she was suffering with excruciating, relentless hip pain in high school that would not go away. She went the standard medical route and the doctors could not find anything wrong with her hip. After one upper cervical adjustment, the pain was gone, and after that, she realized she was destined to be an upper cervical doctor. These are my favorite stories because I love when people use what helped them to get their life back, and then they use that to help other people. And that's exactly what Dr. Mercedes is doing. She's doing some amazing work in her own practice, healing others, and it was an honor to have her on the show today. Please welcome Dr. Mercedes Cook. Today on the Expect Miracles podcast, we have a very special guest, Dr. Mercedes Cook out of San Diego, California. She is a Blair Upper Cervical doctor, had the pleasure of meeting her at the Upper Cervical Conference this year. She's amazing. She's doing amazing work, and it's an absolute thrill to have her on the podcast today. Dr. Mercedes, how are you? Hi, Dr. Kevin. I'm doing awesome. Really thrilled that you asked me to come on your Expect Miracles podcast. And I love talking about upper cervical with people, how I found it, like what we're doing in our office. So I'm excited to share a little bit more with you today. I'm excited too. And I'm always interested to see how people got into upper cervical chiropractic because not many people know about it and not many doctors practice it. So where are you from originally, Mercedes? So I'm originally from a really small town in rural Ohio called Anna. Mm. And I actually met and started upper cervical care when I was in high school. And my parents had kind of taken me to a couple doctors for some different issues, mainly like really bad hip pain. I was a cheerleader and dancer growing up and so kind of beat my body up a little bit. And so having a lot of issues as far as pain goes, but also just other things like anxiety, not sleeping well. I was also graduating high school, going into college. So just like all the stress that comes Mm -hmm. at that age. And so we just, my parents and I, like we weren't really getting any help. We did all the traditional standard medical route, still didn't see any results with anything. So finally, one of my mom's friends told her, hey, you guys should really go see this chiropractor. He's like five minutes from our town, just the next town over. And we didn't know anything about chiropractic, let alone upper cervical, but we just kind of thought, hey, let's go check it out, see, you know, if this guy can help us. And I just, I will always remember it like it was yesterday. His name is Dr. Anthony Monin from Botkins, Ohio. And I was sitting in his office. He's talking to me, you know, about the atlas, the top bone in your neck and how that's probably causing my hip pain. And I'm just Mm -hmm. sitting there thinking like, okay, I have no idea what this guy's saying, but honestly, I'm willing to try anything. Your first chiropractic experience was upper cervical. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Which I know is super rare too. So I went through that process, got some imaging done of my neck. He did the first correction. I went and rested afterwards. I got up and immediately I felt completely different. Like I didn't have hip pain when I stood up, which is something that really been going was that immediate like months. Yeah. So it was already like an immediate reaction. And after I left the room, I told my mom, I was like, I don't even know how this happened, <laughs> but I was just like, this guy just barely touched my neck and now my hip is fine. Mm-hmm. And so he invited us to a class later that nice. week. And so we went to, you know, kind of like a patient orientation class. And he just was explaining upper cervical a little bit more in depth, like what it's truly doing. And at first, you know, the not having hip pain was really great. But then just learning more about like the neurological side about like decreasing anxiety, sleeping better, just like letting your body function in a clearer, more optimal way. 
I didn't even know that that was possible through something like an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And I felt all of those things immediately. So I was sitting in the patient orientation class with my mom and I just looked at her and I was like, mom, I think I'm supposed to be a chiropractor. And she goes, that's awesome. Let's do it. So that was a really cool one, just life altering moment because I didn't have through high school, like we went and job shadowed and did all of these different mm-hmm. things. And I was getting ready to go to Miami University of Ohio for, nice. and I was just going to do pre-med. I thought that I would go to medical school, be a doctor, just sounded like a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really super passionate about it and didn't really have like a why behind it. That's just kind of where I was going until I met Dr. Monin and experienced what upper cervical care was, which is really cool. I think you'll think it's even more interesting that I actually went to chiropractic school only knowing upper cervical. I didn't even know that any other... You thought upper cervical was chiropractic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was really eye-opening because everyone I met, no one else knew what upper cervical was. And I was like, wait, like I thought this was... Where did you go to school? I went to Life University in Georgia. Okay. Because I thought I went to like a very diversified, twist, crack, pop school, and uh, nobody knew upper cervical either. But there's a couple people, like there's a good club you can go to at Life, right? You eventually found a good niche of upper cervical down there, right? Yes. But at first it was like, I was laughed at for upper cervical in my school. Nobody knew what it was. There was one slide on it and I raised my hand. I said, what is that? And they said, oh, don't worry about it. It doesn't work. I was like, okay. (laughs) Like, okay. And that was it. Yeah. But yeah, once I got there and there is a bit more of an upper cervical presence, but it's interesting because yeah, depending on what school you go to, you're just exposed to certain things over or certain techniques, I should say, Mm -hmm. versus other techniques. But I knew like how upper cervical changed my life. However, I was super open to learning. I mean, and we have to learn other techniques too in school. So I'm kind of like, cool, well, I'll just learn all these different things and maybe do a combination or Mm -hmm. figure out what I like. Maybe there's something better. But every single thing that I learned, I was just like, no, upper cervical, like it's the thing. To me personally, it just made the most sense, like using imaging, using objective measures having more like scientific basis. And there's certainly like the art to it too, right? There's so many components, which I love about it, but it always made the most sense to me. And everyone that I talked to who was doing upper cervical, literally like loved their life, loved their practice, saw all these amazing things. And I was like, wow, like that's what I want. Like I want to do that for other people. So all through school, I was definitely open to learning other things, but it always came back to upper cervical. And like, that's what worked for me. That's how I like to get adjusted. Um, And I'd seen it do so many amazing things for other people. So I just kind of stuck with that all through school. I noticed like when other chiropractors used to come to my school and speak, they were either speaking about money or like, this is what you have to do to be successful in practice. And then an upper cervical person would speak and they would just start talking about these miracles they would see in their office. And it was just like a complete like, that's what I want to do. And if I do that, the money will probably follow because they're getting such amazing results anyway. So it was really cool to hear doctors in practice, loving what they do and just seeing unbelievable things on a daily basis. Yeah, exactly. So you're at Life University, you know, you want to do upper cervical chiropractic. How was your experience in clinic? And what did you want to do when you graduated? So My experience in clinic was good. I stuck with doing upper cervical in clinic, which was also like very rare. There's only like a couple of us in outpatient clinic Mm -hmm. who were doing it. And at the time I was doing knee chest. So that's how I had been adjusted through that technique. And that's kind of like all that I knew. And so that's what I did in clinic. That's what I trained, did those seminars all through school. And another interesting thing was I didn't even really know that even in like the upper cervical world, right? There's different techniques, even within that. There's technique bashing within upper cervical. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so cool. And I didn't really learn much about that during school. It was kind of like, okay, I knew what my thing was. I wanted to get really good at it. So I just like honed in on Mm -hmm. that, which was great. And then I was able to do that in clinic. I was able to do my peak, which like an externship as we call it, um, at life. And I did that with Dr. Adam Tedder in Georgia and he had a knee chest practice as well, which is 
awesome. And then as I got close to graduation, so a little backstory, my husband is from Long Beach, California, and we both went to the same undergrad. And we always knew like going through school, like eventually we want to move to California. We want to open up a practice there. And, you know, just like most students in school, I'm just going through school, making sure I'm doing well in my classes. I'm not really thinking about, oh, what does it take to own a business and start a practice and all that stuff? That just wasn't really on my mind at least. And so when I got closer to graduation, I knew that I was not ready to start my own practice. And I was okay with that. And Dr. Monin, who was from Ohio, where I got my first adjustment, he had been in contact with me all through school, but he just let me know like, hey, if you're not ready to start your own practice, I want to hire you as an associate after school. You can work here. And then whenever you feel ready, you can just go out to California and do your own thing. Beautiful. Yeah. And at first I was super resistant because I'm like, no, I don't want to move back home. That's not what I wanted to do. But as it got closer, me and my husband just decided like, hey, this is what's going to be best for us because I have a amazing mentor that is willing to let me come into his practice and get experience, not just clinically, but also help with the business side of things. So I was kind of like, and I'm super close with my family. So it was kind of a win-win. I'll just move back there a little bit and get to hang out with them. So that was really cool experience. So we ended up moving back to Ohio after being in Georgia. And I worked there. I set a goal for myself that I wanted to be an associate for two years. And then I was going to move to California. Nice. And open my own practice. So during that time, I was getting things prepared on like how I was going to open, had my business plan ready, all the things. And then a year and a half into associating, I get this call from actually Adam Tedder, who I did my internship with. And he's like, Hey, Dr. Mercedes, there's this lady in San Diego. She's selling her practice. She does Blair. And he knew that I wanted to transition from the technique I was doing into Blair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I've already kind of picked out where I want to live. I'm kind of already have everything ready to go. So I don't know if I want to do that. And he just kind of pushed me to give her a call anyways. And I was like, you're right. So you wanted to go to long around Long Beach. We actually wanted to start a practice in San Clemente. Okay. Oh, not too far. In the middle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Because we had been in the area a ton. We really liked it. Just chill place. And Mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we had picked. And then, so after that call, I was like, I'm just going to call this lady in San Diego, see why she's selling her practice, what's going on, maybe go check it out. So literally after the first phone call with this other doc, I like knew instantly that I was moving to San Diego. (laughs) Really? It was just you guys connected right away? Yeah. So after talking and learning about the practice for sale in San Diego, the other crazy thing, like you know how everything just kind of aligns when it's supposed to work out. Well, in two weeks, my husband and I were coming out to LA for a wedding. And so we're like, well, while we're there, we might as well just go down to San Diego, check out this practice. And you know, the whole time I just had this feeling that like this was totally going to be it. Mm -hmm. And so of course we come to the wedding, we go see the practice. The practice is beautiful. It has literally everything in it I could possibly want. All the technology, it has digital x-ray, it has CBCT, just everything. And I'm like, wow, this is literally what my dream practice would look like if I opened up on my phone. Yeah. And if I had the money to put everything in it that I want, like this would be it. So I would be totally crazy not to do this. Mm -hmm. And so that was a year and a half into my associateship. And, you know, I was just super thankful for the like support I was getting from my other office because they all knew that I wanted to move to California and start my own thing. And of course, my family is, has been super supportive in whatever I do. So it's just so easy for us to come out here and, and make the transition. It was definitely an interesting time because we moved to San Diego last year in October. And then I kind of got integrated into the practice for a couple months. And then the other doc left and then COVID happened. So that was... Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. That would be a good word to describe it. (laughs) To say the least. Yeah. Certainly there was, I guess, just pretty much just straight fear in the the beginning. Like in the beginning, nobody really knew what was going to happen if literally every business in America was going to shut down or 
what was going to go forward. And so that was really scary of like the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, I just told myself like, no matter what happens, and of course, as long as I'm legally allowed to keep my business open, I'm going to show up every day and I'm just going to do my best. And like, that is, that has to be enough. Right. Absolutely. And so, yeah, for the first couple of weeks, it was definitely really hard with all the uncertainty. But once I just kind of shifted my mentality, I was just like, I've been here for a couple of months. I was super grateful for all the people that I had met and just like had integrated into my network at such a quick or like in such quick notice. And so that was really helpful because I had this whole support system, not just like my family, my husband, my friends, but also just other healthcare providers that I had met and had a great referral system. So it really just one kept my practice alive because as chiropractors, at least for a lot of us, like we love going out and Mm -hmm. networking, doing talks, like doing things in person. That was done. Yeah, that was all completely over with. So I just, I had no idea what to expect, but I used that time to really just one, work on some like personal development stuff because I was like, if I can show up for people in a really big way and help them during like this really crazy and uncertain time, like I know that that that'll be enough and that will help my business. And so ever since I just kind of made that mind shift, honestly, being out in California has been like huge blessing in so many ways. And thankfully, like the practice has been amazing. Not just, it was helpful having existing clients since I bought the right. practice. And then just getting to bring in, find my own people, bring in my own clients. It's really been amazing. And I feel super grateful for how things have gone so far. Absolutely. Yeah, I um looking back on it now, I wouldn't recommend anybody graduating chiropractic school and opening up an upper cervical practice because you see you're almost with all your patients, you're the last stop on that patient's list because they've been everywhere else. So you get a lot of difficult cases. So to be able to learn from somebody for 2 years and 6 months in the other practice, what was that experience like for you to help you get ready to where you're at now? Yeah. Honestly, it was crucial to like my skill set. And exactly like you said, anybody that is doing upper cervical work, I highly recommend associating and working for a mentor before. And some people can totally do it. I've had friends that have done yeah. it and done amazing. People can do it for sure. Yeah. And that's awesome. But for me, like getting to one, build up the confidence to handle these really tough cases. And just when unexpected things happen, I felt like during my associateship that first year and a half, like so many crazy cases, oh, unexpected yeah. things, even like Dr. Monin, who I was associating for, he'd been in practice for 10 years. And he was like, so many crazy things are coming up with you being here. And he's like, I really think it's just to prep you for when you're on your own. He's like, I haven't even seen this many crazy things happen in 10 years. And now all these things are coming up. So It was such a great learning experience for me. And the other cool thing was during this time, so I just graduated, I learned that upper cervical had a diplomate program. Mm. And once I found out about that and how it taught you about all the different techniques, and not that you were going to practice all of them, but just getting a better knowledge of, of all the techniques, how they do their analysis, I was super intrigued. And I had watched Dr. Monin go through the diplomate program as well. And I saw how it changed like his how practice. Practiced, yeah. And it was amazing. And so that's what brought me to like, right after I graduated in December of 2017, I went ahead and joined the diplomate program in April of, nice. I think that was 2018. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was just a really cool experience to get exposure to that. So not only did I have like the associateship, I started the diplomate program. I was, I think I was, if not close to the youngest person in it because I just came out of school. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting in a room with all these upper cervical chiropractors who've been in practice for like five, 10, 20, even 30 years. And that in itself was so cool for Mm -hmm. me. Um, And the things that I learned, not even just in the class, which is still ongoing, by the way, but just not even in the class, but just those personal relationships and learning from other people who've been doing this for so long. It was truly amazing. And I really think it prepped me for not only just owning my own practice in 
a completely new city with no family, but it also prepped me for owning a business and being able to do really well in the midst of COVID era. So <laughs> super thankful for that. Are you in Dr. Uh, Liz Haver's class? Yeah. Yeah. She literally talk about an internship. She literally taught me so much, like pretty much everything I know about Blair. Like she just, I've never seen anybody like just take the time with me. Cause a lot of people, when you go shadow other doctors, they're busy, they're doing their thing. They almost don't even really, you're just watching. She was like, she took me hands on, made sure I was doing leg checks and adjustments and couldn't say enough about her. So I know she's in your class and I'm sure you have a bunch of other people in your class that it was just an honor to be in there and uh, just pick their brain and see anybody that's been doing upper cervical for over five years. I have such a great appreciation for because you see everything and it gets difficult at times. And if you hung in it with for that long, it's you're doing a good job. Yeah, for sure. So how's practice for you right now? What's it like? And what kind of cases are you seeing in your office? Yeah. So Practice right now, once I got through kind of those first like couple months of uncertainty just with COVID, things have honestly been rolling and going super smoothly. It's just me and my office manager, Gloria, who is a complete rock star. She was working for the other doctor before I came and bought the practice. So she was already like well integrated. So having an office manager who just literally takes care of every single thing. So I honestly feel like all I do is I go in there and take care of people. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm good at. So that's been a huge, huge blessing. And right now, like I was thinking some of my coolest cases, which I think it's funny that we're doing this podcast right now, because a couple of days ago, I had this mom bring her daughter in and she's a teenager. And randomly over the last couple of weeks, she started just developing random ticks where she would like hit herself or like throw mm. things involuntarily. When she came into my office this week on Monday, she was just like yelling random things like I'm a pumpkin or I'm a dragon, just like completely off the wall. How old is this girl? She's 13. And she wasn't doing this like a year or a two couple ago? weeks ago. No, no. Really? Yeah. So this is just a couple weeks into like all of this happening. And so obviously the mom is super concerned. She had taken her daughter to regular chiropractors before for sports and just kind of maintenance type style chiropractic. But she said that she was reading into upper cervical and she felt like maybe a more specific approach and getting some imaging done would be good. And so we went through the whole process. We did a CBCT scan on her, did all of our thermography checks and gave her her first adjustment. And then I wasn't supposed to see them until I think next Monday, but mm -hmm. her mom called me and she was like, Hey, I really think that I should bring my daughter back in. I just want you to like see her. And I was like, okay, sure. Just bring her on back in. And literally within a day, she walks back into my office, quiet as can be not like throwing anything, mm. doesn't yell out that she's a pumpkin. It was like, I cried a little yeah, bit. Yeah, definitely. It, it was so powerful. And I think this mom was like, almost just like, did this really just happen? Which is, is so cool. And that just kind of brings it back to upper cervical is when you do it properly, like it can literally change people's lives in such a big, way because I mean this girl is 13 years old and if no one ever got to the root cause of the problem which for her was her top bone in her neck you know if nobody ever figured that out this would lead into a trajectory of just medication after medication mm -hmm. and never really solving the problem so I'm just so thankful that this mom found our office and decided to come in so that's something that just happened this week yeah which is really freaking cool. And that's a huge ripple effect too, because when you have something like that, not only is it affecting that little girl, it's going to put pressure on the mother. It's going to put pressure on the marriage. It might even cause some family issues down the road. And so like that whole ripple effect, it's affected so many people in such a positive way, just from moving the top bone and the neck back in place. I mean, it's the most amazing thing. It will forever blow my mind of how amazing upper cervical is. Yeah, absolutely. And 
some of my other like top cases, I feel like that come to the office is I see a lot of Meniere's mm-hmm. cases, um, which are super fascinating. And every patient's a little bit different. Overall, all the cases that I've seen have responded extremely well. Some get their first atlas correction, hold really well. And I've had a couple who haven't had a Meniere's tax since being mm-hmm. under care. There are some patients who will get a correction, they'll be fine for a couple months, and then they will wait until like some of the symptoms start coming back, and then they'll come back to, to get a correction. But so those are some of the biggest things. And I mean, I think that, and I don't know if it's just being a female, I feel like I attract a lot of younger to middle-aged women who mm-hmm. are just dealing with chronic issues like headaches, migraines, vertigo, things like that. Those are kind of the top things that we see. And at the end of the day, like getting rid of symptoms is great, but really just seeing people get their life back, like that is really the coolest part of our job. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Dr. Mercedes, where can people find you? Where is your practice and where are you at online? Yeah. So my practice name is Upper Cervical Chiropractic San Diego. We have an Instagram. We also have a Facebook page under just our office name. Our website is uppercervicalsd.com. So if you look up any of those or on our website, that'll kind of direct you to all of our our social media. But if you're in the San Diego area, my practice is located in Mission Valley. So it's very nice and central, which I love. So we have a lot of people coming from the city, North County, Mexico. It's just kind of an easy, good central location for everybody. One question I forgot to ask you, you have CBCT and digital x-ray. Are there instances where you're using both? So 99% of the time I am just using CBCT. So Mm -hmm. what I do is in my consultation, just kind of getting a feel for like, okay, is this solely an upper cervical problem? Is it something that could potentially be affecting them in their lower back as well. Mm. I kind of gauge that through the consultation. And then I'll do an exam, which sure you do something similar where we do the Titron scans, we do different leg checks, posture checks, and through palpation, we can usually, especially with our Prill, Blair specific leg checks, Mm -hmm. like we know if this is going to be an issue in just the upper cervical, or is there something going on in their low back as Mm -hmm. well? Definitely. Which happens. Yes, for sure. So if I suspect that if any of the issues are actually coming from the lower back or, you know, I suspect like they fractured something or something just doesn't add up, then I'll for sure get a more of a a bigger picture with doing more imaging. But most of the time I can identify and show the patient that, hey, the issue, whether it's in your neck or your back, like it's all coming from up up at the top. So Mm -hmm. let's just start with the CBCT scan. And like, and be a little bit more conservative on imaging. And then if that corrects the issue, great. If it doesn't, and we need more imaging, then we can always go back. Absolutely. The majority of the time I just use CBCT because it gives so, so much good information that like, once you correct that, everything else just falls into place as well. I switched over to CBCT uh, last year and it has been like... I can't like it's night and day. Like it's like I can't believe I was using digital x rays before that. It's changed the results of like not how I adjust, but the ability to find where the actual problem is in the neck is just that I wouldn't even practice without it at this point. The only limitation I do see with it is sometimes when you get somebody with big burly shoulders like this, you only get down to about C3, Mm -hmm. C4. So it would come in handy to have that digital where I can get a nice lateral of like five, six and seven, but yeah, yeah, the CBCT sure. is an absolute game changer. And I recommend anybody doing the upper serve of work to at least try to find a mobile service or for out for scans because yeah, I can't even put it into words. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know it seriously, truly is amazing. And I feel like it's really, you know, changing the game and, and chiropractic and specifically upper cervical, just kind of taking it to the next level. So I feel Absolutely. extremely grateful to be able to actually have it in house in my practice so patients can get their scans there and we can get things moving. Yeah. And it's so funny when you talk to somebody like Jake who found it and he's just like, he's the most humble person ever. And uh, I like, it's like, oh yeah, no big deal. It's like he legitimately revolutionized the way upper cervical chiropractic works. Uh, Very cool. 
Yeah. And at the end of every show, I like to ask all my guests one question. What is one piece of advice that really resonated with you over the years that you would like to gift the audience? Could be absolutely anything. Ooh, okay. Loaded question. That is a great question. Yeah, take your time. Best advice. So I think the absolute best advice that I've ever gotten is, and I think this is true just not even in the chiropractic world, but whatever area of life or field of work that you're in, if you become extremely just true to yourself and know what you're good at and who you're good at helping, that's when you're truly going to succeed. Sometimes I think we get caught up in wanting to like do it all and be it all for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then that really diminishes our true like light and gift that we have to give. So, and that's something that I had to learn over my first couple years of practice is like, who am I? Who, what am I really good at doing? And like, who are the people that I'm really good at helping? And because of that, like staying true to myself and kind of honing in on who I'm best at helping I've been able to get really good results, help the people, and then also recognize people that are not in my realm of helping and not just saying like, okay, well, sorry, I can't help you, but figuring out like who can help them, right? Because if I'm not going to do it or it's not going to be a complete job, like I want to find somebody that is going to correct their problem. So I think, yeah, my biggest advice is just that, like be true to yourself all the time and just get really good at like what you're good at and then find other people who like hone their craft and are good at their thing. Because when you build that network in that community, like you truly will help people in so many ways. Absolutely. It's funny you say that because I was actually thinking about this the other day. Like when somebody comes to your office and you say, oh, how'd you hear about us? They say this one person's name and you think back to that person. It's like, I didn't really quote unquote help them out, get a hundred percent symptom free, but I remember being completely authentic with them, gave them everything I had. And I think that goes a long way with people because we still get referrals in our office from people that we thought we quote unquote didn't help as much as we wanted to. And they recognize, those people recognize that and they still send people into your office because they recognize that you're doing a great job and you genuinely want to help as many people as you can. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Doc, thank you so much for coming on. You have an amazing story. I would love to have you back on anytime. And yeah, thanks for putting all the cards out on the table. And I appreciate you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, subscribe, give us five stars and leave a review. It really helps boost the podcast and spread the good word. My chiropractic practice is located in West Orange, New Jersey at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. You can also find us on Facebook at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. All of my information is on my website at drkevinpecka.com, drkevinpecka.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dr. Kevin Pecka for podcast episodes, patient testimonials, and educational videos. I have daily affirmations and inspirational quotes on Instagram at easel affirmations, E A S E L affirmations. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at Dr. Kevin Pekka at gmail.com. D R Kevin Pekka at gmail.com. Thank you everyone and have a great day. Cheers.